there another housing crash coming? Hey guys, it's 2019 now and the stock market, as we all know, hasn't been doing very hot actually for the past year or so and it's still not doing great anymore. Um, people aren't really trusting their cash and investments anymore and with California not doing so great in real estate, the rest of the United States is wondering, is it coming? Is the housing crash of 2019 finally here? I live in Colorado. I'm only 22 years old. I don't know a whole lot about the market. I've only really been getting into it for the past three years. So that being said, I can't speak for the entirety of the entire United States. I can't speak for California or New York. Uh, even though you, you hear all the time that California isn't doing so hot, the values of all the properties over there are pretty much staying stagnant. And then you hear that Chinese and Russian companies are coming to the United States and buying property over here. And before I go any further, usually when you have countries from a whole nother continent buying land and buying property in your country, that's usually a good thing. In regards to the value of the property here, they see they see value increasing over time, um, but it's not such a great thing for Americans that want to be investing in real estate in their own country because now you have China and, and all these other countries coming in and buying in all the real estate. So if other countries are seeing potential in our real estate, that's a great thing. I live in Western Colorado. It's a little region called the Grand Valley. I'll show a little screenshot right here of specifically where that's located. So I was at work, I was walking down the hallways and I was thinking, what's the most millennial thing I could do right now? Pick up the newspaper. So I grab the paper and I start flipping through it and this headline catches my eyes because it's something that I've been wondering for a while. Is there another housing crash coming? In this article, the guy only talks about the region that I live in, the Grand Valley, Western Colorado. If you're not familiar with Colorado, the western side of it has got Vail, it's got Aspen, so it's a very wealthy part. I don't live in the wealthiest part of it, but you know, we've got a lot of real estate around here. Actually, the writer of this article is a real estate agent in this area. His name is Sean Demores. I think that's how you pronounce your last name. If you're watching this, please forgive me. Sean says, the most common question I've been asked in the past 30 days is how is the market? If you're curious, give me a call and we can discuss because your specific market is different than someone else's. So what you're still wondering is if we are on the brink of a housing crash and if your home is your only investment strategy, I too would be a little nervous. However, there are signs that show we may not necessarily be headed for another bust in the near future. First off, foreclosures are nowhere near the levels today that they were in 2009 through 2012. This is the most interesting section of the article coming up because this is where he lists the numbers of foreclosures and the deeds of, from foreclosures. And I'm gonna, I did all my own statistics and I did the numbers percentages and I'm gonna tell you what they are right now. It's gonna be pretty obvious to tell whether we're in a housing crisis or not. Watch this. Between 2009 and 2012, there were 2,286 foreclosures filed and 1,134 deeded at a foreclosure sale. So as you can see, during the housing crisis of 2009 through 2012, that's a three year span, there was 2,200, almost 2,300 foreclosures, meaning that the average amount of foreclosures per year was about 700 to 800 foreclosures a year. Out of those 2,300, only about 1,100 of them were actually sold to another owner. That means that 49.6, so 50% of all the foreclosures were actually sold to another owner and 50% of them bust. Now that's pretty scary that in a three year span there was that many foreclosures and not a lot of them were deeded afterwards. As we take a look at the statistics from 2015 through 2018, I think you're gonna be a little more relieved. So since 2015, there have only been 288 foreclosures filed and 167 of them deeded at a foreclosure sale and just 12 of those in 2018. Wow, what a difference. So from 2015 through 2018, that's another three year span. There was only 288 foreclosures. Let's call it 300. From 2009 through 2012, there was 2300. So a whole 2000 less foreclosures in this three year span than we experienced in the housing crisis of early 2010, 2009. When you compare the amount of foreclosures from 2009, 2012, which was 2300 of them, to the amount of foreclosures from 2015 through 2018, which was about 300, that's an 87% drop in foreclosures. 
If you don't know what that means, that means that's a very, very healthy market. It means that people aren't struggling paying off their houses and don't have to sell them back to the banks. So of those 288 foreclosures that we've seen in the past three years, 167 of them were deeded, which means that 58% of the foreclosures were actually sold to another owner, which is a lot better than the 49% back in 2009 through 2012. And did you guys catch this little number at the end that I read? Just 12 of those in 2018. 12 foreclosures in 2018. Like I mentioned, back in 2009 through 2012, there was 2,300 foreclosures in a three year span, which is an average of about 760 foreclosures per year. 760 foreclosures per year. From 2015 through 2018, there was a total of 288 foreclosures, let's call it 300 foreclosures. That means there's an average of about 100 foreclosures per year. So talking in regards to an average, that'd be pretty accurate, right? But here it says that in 2018, there was only 12 foreclosures in the valley. That means that in 2018, there was an 87% drop in foreclosures from 2015 through 2018. 87% drop. If you guys live in the valley, you guys know how expensive it's getting. But the fact that there's only 12 for, there's only been 12 foreclosures, it's pretty spectacular. That means that people can afford to live here, that people aren't having any troubles living here. Of course, there's still a little bit of foreclosures here and there, but for the most part, it's pretty damn healthy. And I think that property values can go up a lot higher from here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you live in Colorado, let me know what you guys think about your area if you don't live on the western slope or anything. Please let me know how things are going in the real estate market for you guys. Thank you for watching.